Hi, I'm Matthew Wolf. Welcome to another edition of Film Roundtable. I'm excited to welcome back to the show three lovely and extremely talented cinematographers. I'm here with Natasha Breyer, Mandy Walker, and Polly Morgan. Welcome back. Hi, Matt. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Thanks so much for coming back. I know you guys have a crazy schedule right now. So, and I wanted to, I'm, we're excited to get you all together. I know it doesn't happen very often. We we haven't, I only just met Polly actually, didn't I, in person, because yeah. we'd seen each other on Zooms for a while. And I remember the first time I, I met Natasha and we'd been talking as well on email and we just gave each other a big hug and so, well, you two in the flesh. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird, isn't it? Like you communicate with each other via like social media or via email and then you actually get to see each other in, in like, you know, for real. And it's like, you feel like you've known each other for such a long time. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Where, did, where you, you guys saw each other at the BSC Awards, is that right? We did. Uh, yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. I had to go to London twice in 10 days. And I only just got back a couple of days ago and then had to immediately go to the SciTech Awards and then um, the SOC last night. So my eyes are kind of going like <laughs> But it's all fun. I'm having a really good time. What about you, Polly? What What are you up to at the moment? Yeah, I'm in London. No, I'm in my my hometown. I'm doing a biopic at the moment about Amy Winehouse. Um, but it's funny because I think, you know, the whole thing about you know the award season and and sort of doing that. I just, you know, it's funny when we have to do that as part of our jobs. And I never really, you know, ever considered it before you know I did the Woman King loss or like in 21 and then I just had to do a bit of that last year and it's such a different mindset to put yourself in isn't it as a DP to just go out and sort of do all that stuff and be on all the panels and just be a part of the the um I don't know the PR and stuff after you do a job it's like a, it was a new experience for me doing it and uh yeah I mean Mandy you must be exhausted uh, I am, but it's it's fun. I'm really enjoying it. And like I was saying to Matt before, it's nice sort of because the people in the movie, we haven't seen each other for over a year. So we all get back together and we're kind of doing the whole thing um, all over the place, keep bumping each, into each other all over the place. And it's that's nice part of it. And also, I mean, I finished this movie uh, a year ago and yeah over a year ago and it's it's sort of talking about it again is actually a good thing because I remind myself of the experience and the journey that we went on and and it, that I I think it's really lovely I, I'm enjoying that it's such a beautiful movie too like it's Thank just you. incredible what you guys did and uh I mean yeah it's it's definitely one of my favorite movies Thank you and year. both of you did beautiful work this year too Natasha, you as well. I love what you said. Yeah, like I really, I love that movie. It was Me amazing. Too. Kind of all the opposite to your movies. It's like a zero visual movie to start with. You know, that's the premise. It's like, okay, do you want to do a movie in an office with fluorescent lighting that you're not even allowed to touch and just people talking all the time and when they're not talking, they're talking on the phone? Yeah, that's <laughs> like my dream. But um, yeah, it was a challenge in a very different way, I guess, than... Um, the films that we normally kind of choose to do or your films this year which are like a super visual trip right but I still think your movie was very beautifully done in storytelling wise for in terms of cinematography it was very elegant and you didn't kind of distract from the story you were enhancing the story in the way that you moved and the way that it was lit and the natural part of the lighting like you say I thought it worked really nicely yeah. Reminded me and of the all the president's men. That was kind of like the Bible, you know. I would just obviously before you start prepping, you just watch all the films to do with investigations and stuff. And that was kind of like my my main reference in a way. And 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 the goal was to to be quite invisible, you know. I was mm. thinking about that movie a lot, and also about like the Frederick Wiseman documentaries for some reason, where you just think just feel like the camera is just just was dumped there you know somebody left <laughs> to lunch and and it, it it's kind of like this not manipulated uh window to the world and things just happen and it feels so real like you forget the filmmakers uh that was kind of the idea for this you know like to actually 
be quite invisible as a cinematographer and and I think it I think it kind of worked in a way like it's um that yeah that that kind of humbleness right that invisibility yeah. helped help it to to honor the that it's a real story and to feel real and to feel that you're just there and not not, not feel the the filmmakers so much but it's funny how you sometimes have to do so much work for people to think that you didn't do any lighting or anything to be like I think this is the time that I work the most to be the most invisible you know and it's 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 just weird it's a weird experience but it's 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 cool you know like what we all love and I'm sure you are the same at least always like throw yourself to different challenges and, and 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 things that you kind of haven't done before or you would have not thought that you're going to be doing and this was kind of like okay how do we succeed on something that you know when you read it on paper it's like it's definitely not a cinematographer's movie not a, not a visual journey uh so yeah it was it was challenging but it was fun <laughs> i did a film um a long time ago called lantana and it was very similar and that was a really hard movie for me too because i was working with available light and didn't have much control like you you know you were saying and and that was difficult because you you kind of you don't want to interfere too much but then you've got to deal with existing lighting sources and balance all that and still technically do your job as you say yeah i mean i i agree i mean i think that that is the hardest thing and it's something that i really respect you for because I'm I'm also doing something right now which is based on truth somewhat but it's like I'm trying to find that balance of making it feel real and not trying to make it look too pretty but also like there's this weird sort of um there's a, a slight cinematic approach to it but I think that that is something I struggle with and like I think it's something I try and do more and more every job that I do which is like you know, just to stop myself, just trying to make it look too good and just try and make it like feel real and authentic and just only think about like the story that I'm telling at that point and not just be like, oh, I could just make her or him look a bit better if they had a sparkle in the eye or yeah, move the light around a bit or something. So um, I think it's something that I'm constantly pushing myself and trying to get better at for sure. It's interesting to hear you talk about that approach because obviously you're doing a biopic on a singer mandy just did a biopic on a singer and you know those two, it sounds like two very different approaches between the two films yes i mean our, ours was all about <clears throat> the spectacle velvet and the grandeur <clears throat> and the scale and the you know uh very strong visual messages and and um representations of story and and um I mean, you work with Baz and it's not ever sort of, um, he's always after like, I mean, he, I, I'm going backwards now. I feel like he's a, a visionary and he has an idea that's original and you have to, you get that challenge of achieving it. But with Elvis, it was always, um, you know, the, the, I mean, he was an icon and he's, we wanted to excite audiences and make them feel like they're at a concert. And so there was that part of it as well. But his life, his life was large and, and um, you know, and, and very visual and, and with that and the music. And it was meant to be um, exciting to an audience to be part of that. So it was a different approach, completely different to what the other films were. And um, it was sort of more fantastical I suppose in some elements you see in in the camera you know that attempt to capture kind of the the, the same uh, energy and soul of his music and his life but what you're doing with the camera work and I was actually really uh, intrigued because um, almost every shot the camera is moving I don't know if you shot everything like on an arm and stuff um, and it's it was really interesting to see how that was part, like the film goes really fast. Like you have to go through all this biopic, right? And the rhythm is like, boom, boom, neck, you know? And and so the camera movement is really helping for that. It's, it, it felt like it was almost like storyboarded as a commercial where you know exactly you're doing this movement 
and then you're going to cut in two seconds and this other shot is going to come and it's going to continue the movement. And I was wondering, did they really do all this work of choreographing all these movements and thinking about all this or were they shooting like with a lot of movement in general? And then when you cut it together, it just feel, it just it just feels that there's a lot of thoughts in many moments of the film where it, you know, the, the, the continuation between one movement and another, which might have been in a totally different part of town and schedule. And, you know, like, um, I don't know, I just was wondering how, how much you worked on that dance. It, that That's exactly right. We, we did, um, a lot of it was pre-planned because as you say, we had to move from one set to another. We had to move from exterior back lot to an interior set that was a transition so all those transitions were definitely planned and um we I think I did a lot of pre-production on this film and so editorial were part of it as well and we did testing and we were on on a um a Scorpio telescopic crane a lot in terms of how we moved around and um we had two actually for the concert sequences and we did um replicate the the concerts from uh, the Vegas show and the 68 special exactly. So I had to lie, I had to copy exactly those shots. But as you say, in between, there was the drama of the movie and how we would move it along. And it's a long, it's a big story. So we had to, to we wanted to keep it moving from one era to another or from one part of his journey to another in terms of the drama but um the end of the film it does really slow down you know intentionally the camera really slows down and sometimes doesn't move at all because that's when it's he's coming to the end of his life and his wife's left him and he can't leave the colonel and he's trapped in his hotel room and those scenes were really important to not move and um, to make a, a kind of a, a very conscious um, message to the audience that, you know, we weren't flying around. It wasn't all the excitement of, of um, his uh, life in terms of um, being a star, but this was real life and and there was a tra it was a tragedy and so we really slowed down. But he really um, felt that too, I think. He really, like, just that decision to do that with the camera just was so poignant and it definitely added, you know, so much to that sadness that you felt for him, I thought. Thank you. Yeah, they're good. I mean, but but we also, you know, as well as planning all those shots, we, uh, like, we were super organised and we got to set each day, especially in those big concert sequences, like all the camera operators and the dolly groups had rehearsed. We'd done dress rehearsals with the cameras. We all knew what was going on so that once we got all that footage, then we did kind of do riffing and we did explore. And there's a lot of that in the movie as well, where, where we just would be in the moment and the cameras would go handheld or we would um, get on the crane and just start looking at, at different angles going with the music, you know, like when you are doing a music video, you know, you end up doing that for a little bit so there's a lot of that where you just are in the emotion of the scene and and all the actors doing something that you hadn't planned and then you just go with it so I think that by being really super organized we let ourselves have time to do that as well which um you know I was really proud of that that part of it too but yeah, it's funny because we all talk about like all our films are very different like you know Polly did um Crawdads as well as as um, the Woman King, very different stories. But you should talk about the Woman King too, because you took a a really strong visual approach to that that I thought really worked well for the storytelling too. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that um, you know, I think it's just going back to what we were saying before. You know, like is to be like invisible as much as you can, and just try, especially with like you know, like we're working with like people that have existed in history and to kind of do justice to their life and what it was like and to try and not make it too, you know, try your hardest, I think for me is like not to make, especially in Africa, not to make it too commercial or glossy so that it felt gritty and you kind of felt like the heat or the dirt or the sweat and all that type of stuff. Um, and so that you could connect with the characters. Um, and then I think it's that thing, you know, it's just, 
which I know that we probably, you know, all do is just, you know, try and lens it in a way and move the camera in a way to try and immerse the viewer within that world. Um, and so I think that was just what we just tried to do in Africa, you know, is just to sort of dig deep into the research of the time and what we knew about those women um, and, you know, the, the way that they live their lives and just try and like, you know, take people back to that time in history and educate them in a way, but also educate them in a way that would excite them and enthrall them and like get them excited about a time and a place that we don't know about, you know, and I think for me, when I think about the woman king, I, I'm I'm so happy when I hear of like young black women, how it's moved them and inspired them and given them courage. And I think, you know, it's it's really amazing as a filmmaker, I think, to know that, you know, we've maybe done something that, you know, hadn't been done before and it will lead the way for more studios to invest their money and to make movies with black casts because you know, they know that they can make money and people are interested in, in hearing about, you know, stories with people of color and in different parts of the world. And we can kind of broaden our scope um, because, you know, we're all of a certain generation that we grew up watching movies that didn't have the scope or the voices that we have yeah. now and that we will have moving forward. So um, I think that that's really cool. You guys have all, you know, you've, you've all taken, or rather you've all filmed movies very, you know, these three recent movies that we're talking about, Elvis and Woman King, and she said, they're all, they all have a message and they've all been filmed in very different places, different parts of the world. And they're all very different, but are all very relevant. Natasha, what was it like having been weighted down with such a, a responsibility on your shoulders? Yeah, it was, um, it, it, it really felt like that, as I said before, like when, you know, when you, you get that script and you're like, going to be in a white office with fluorescent and whenever it's not a white wall it's like a mirror or a glass it's not like yeah I want to do this movie but when you obviously read um you know what the movie is about um uh, inside that location um there's no way that that you you don't feel drawn to do, to do the movie so I you know the the, the moment I, I I read it I was like I, I have to do this I have to find a way as a cinematographer to fall in love with these white walls and 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 manage to you know to to support the story visually um and yeah it just felt it felt like more than a movie in a way it felt it felt that it was such an important story to tell and to be part of um and it was very moving uh, because you know we had a lot of um survivors that were part of our cast not necessarily playing themselves but playing other characters but it was a lot of moments where you know it was a lot of emotional release you know from from the cast from from us witnessing these testimonies whether they were their testimonies or not or you know but there was um always this experience of some sort of healing process also you know through the movie and through um filming these voices which we had all read on the newspapers and the articles and you know nothing was really like new but I think what was new was to to see it interpreted to see it in the drama right uh to see a woman like the act of telling this for the first time in a bar to somebody and like kind of opening a, a knot that was trapped here and and being able to talk and that was kind of like a a magic moment you know every time we were filming one of those um scenes um so yeah I've, i i i felt very lucky that i was able to to tell that story you know it was it was hard in many ways as i said like you know like the location was like the most anti-photographic place ever and then shooting in New York with COVID and stuff. It's like everything is a night. Like you, you arrive to set and the generator is like five blocks from the location and you're already like wasted, you know, most of your day with, with location complications and stuff. It's, everything is like a battle. And then at the end, when you kind of, at the end of the day, you're happy just because you survived the bat battle and 
you got something decent on the frame, which is not like, wow, this is amazing, you know? Uh, so the the satisfaction was coming from 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 a different place, I think, that was less of an aesthetic place, but on kind of like a mission place of, you know, just making sure that we were honoring all these women, you know, that had the courage to to talk about something that was very, very difficult to talk because that, that's what it's at the end, you know, it's, it's not about that particular story or about that particular person, but it's about women, you know, coming together and helping each other to, to be able to have the safety of talking, you know. I also found that the story of the two, the journalists, the women that 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 worked on that, very emotional too. I, I, it's very empowering, you know, when you realise that they they've got him and they they're they're going to publish and and um, they've done their work and and it, it was very. I found that very moving. It was very emotional for me that that as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's that thing, isn't it? Is that the they got to a point where they just sacrificed or they were willing to sacrifice everything in order to tell this story. And I think, you know, like, I mean, God, it's like, it has changed the face of our industry, but it's changed the face of so many industries. And like, I think it's, you know, it's so funny. I'd like, as a woman too, I think I can relate to that as well, you know? So I think it was emotional for me in so many ways to, to, mm know about like sacrifice as a woman to do something like in a career but also like how their sacrifice has actually helped my career too because without them I don't even know if my career would have had the um, opportunities because I think the Me Too movement opened up so many doors for us as women Mm. Um, but I mean just I mean it's just so broad and it has so much scope and I think that's the power of cinema, isn't it? It's like all these people have, you know, gone and seen your movie, Natasha, and they might not have been able to relate and you've made it like accessible to them in your art form. And, you know, they've they've emoted and they've felt and now they've empathized. And I think that's mm-hmm. such a wonderful thing with what we do, you know, in our jobs is we help people connect to these characters and these stories and, you know, it means more, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I think empathy is a big word for what we do, you know, yeah. for sure. For sure. Just changing tack slightly. How have you, would you say all of you changed your approach to, to doing a film in terms of the prep mentally and, and, and research from when you started your careers to where you're at right now? Yeah. I mean, I just want to jump in because I think like when I think about Elvis, you know, um, and why I think Mandy, I mean, not only is it gorgeous, but like when you're working with a director like Baz, and I don't know Baz and nor have I ever met him, but I've seen all of his films. And I just think as a visionary, you know, like to work with a director like that is obviously demanding for a cinematographer because you work with these directors and they have all these ideas and then you want to respond to them and give them what they want. So it adds like such an enormous challenge um, as a DP. And I think, um, what is so fascinating, I think, now that I'm working more and more on more projects is that relationship with your director and how different all directors are, and then the prep process and how that differs as well on a you know project by project basis. Um, and so I think it's so difficult to answer your question because um, I think the prep process so depends on your relationship with your director and sort of their vision or how strong their vision is or how collaborative they want to be or you know so it kind of it doesn't necessarily depend on sort of how it is as we grow as DPs or what we learn but more you know sort of figuring out like what your relationship is with your director and how they want to work and how you can you know work with them and the material and the scouting and the planning and all of that so I think you know it's just fascinating you know just it's it's almost like I wish I'd gone to university and studied psychology because (laughs) part of it is just it's interesting and different every single time 
I agree. It's like you have to be, I was saying to someone the other day, you have to be a bit of a chameleon. And when, because you take a script like Natasha was saying, it's about the storytelling. That's what draws you to the, the film. And then when you start talking to the director, I don't know about you two, I'm sure it's the same. You spend the first two meetings working out how they want you to work with them and, and what they want you to, you know, how, how much influence you're going to have on the look of it or you're going to be servicing their vision and how they want you to work with them on that, whether they've got really strong ideas or they just, some directors say, I've got no idea how to shoot this, just bring me some ideas, you know. And so that you sort of just got to work that out in the first couple of meetings and then go with it. But one thing, you know, like I was saying about working with Baz is he'll say, he'll talk about story and um, have these visual meetings with everybody, with editorial, myself, production design, VFX, everyone. And then you go off and you do your own research. And he's like, what he's taught me is um, that I can't, I, I can, I, when I work with him, I feel like I'll come back and I'll say, I've got this idea and this, this, this. And then he'll say, okay, but make it better. Not in those words, but he's like that. So he's constantly getting you to do the best job that you possibly can and and, and then pushes you to um, to go above that, you know. And, and I learned that from him when, when we first started working together on the Chanel commercial like 20 years ago. But it's something that I bring to films now, other films, is that, you know, I'll have an idea and develop an idea and then the next day I'll go, but is that the best idea? Is that the best thing that, that I can come up with for this? So I never kind of stop and say, oh, I've done that now, you know, and I, that's something that I, I do all the time. And, and I make, I do like my prep, I think is so important. Prep I use really diligently um, to be able, because I also like, to not say no to a director I'm sure you guys are the same and so you know when you're doing you're on set and they say I know we talked about only shooting all that way but can we shoot this this way and you sort of I I try and when I'm prepping now imagine the possibilities that might happen that we hadn't planned and to be as ready for that as I can so I can turn around and go yep I've got a couple of lights waiting over there you know it, it, within budget and within kind of practicality but that's something I learned from him that's so great that's like mm. such, such good advice you know to always you know you think of that oh god I had such a good idea about this but then be like oh, it's like that thing about putting all the lights on and then turning the lights off yes like, exactly I, like that I'm like I'm, not, I'm like sat there and I'm lit and I'm like can I turn these lights off or you know because yeah. I always people say it's actually better when you turn them off so <laughs> mm. as long as you've not not I mean as long as you're not on set shooting and you're doing that I mean it's that's why I say I try and do it as much as I can in prep but I've been exactly like you on set and you go that I don't need that 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 or that go you know it's better now and but as long as you don't take time do you, do you agree like you can't sort of be there deliberating it's got to happen you got to think really quickly on your feet yeah, yeah. It's funny. I remember well, that was one of the first things that somebody said when I was in film school. Like, was like some another student, but you know those things that really stick to you, like the first kind of lessons. And somebody said about that, like you have to make a quick decision. It doesn't matter if it's the good decision or the bad decision. It has to be quick, and then you're gonna <laughs> have to stick to it. And I was like, yeah. oh my god, this is traumatizing. <laughs> you know? uh, but it's true, you know, and sometimes you you have to do that. And then you spend the rest of the three hours in that scene thinking it would have been better with yeah. that different thing. But now I'm sticking to it. I'm making the best out of this decision because yes. speed is as important and every as everything else, right? Mm. But it's funny yeah. what you're saying uh, with the directors because I totally agree with um with you guys uh, but isn't it funny that when you meet a director on the first time one of the main things they ask you always is like how do you like to work in prep like how do you like yeah. to prep and you're like <laughs> it doesn't even I'm gonna answer this but it doesn't even matter because we're gonna do whatever you wanna do you know yeah. like yeah. This is how, ideally I would like to have a prep but basically I'm just gonna try to get in your head whichever way you let me 
and and absorb whatever it's your vision so that then I can support it. But yeah, every I I, I agree. It's like every every film is a different journey when when especially when it's a different director. And I don't think you'll ever, even if you go to psychology school, Polly, I don't <laughs> think you'll ever have the tools. Like you think you, you've you seen it all, you think you know it all. And then every every new job, it's yeah. a new world. It's a new world and it's it's a mystery. And, and, and I think that's part of the interesting thing of making films with people and having human relationships, right? There's all these things that are... They're beyond the technique, beyond the art that you, you, it's just human interaction that is gonna, no matter how old you get and how many decades of experience you have, it's always gonna be this factor of something new that that is surprising yeah. you and challenging you. Yeah, different That's countries, totally different people, like, for sure. I mean, I do say that when I have, you know, someone shadowing me or like if, you know, talking to sort of up and coming DPs is like, the work is the easy part, you know, the, the hard part or the part that I've learned to navigate is like the politics, the relationships, the communication, like communication, communication, like making sure that, you know, because that's so important, isn't it? It's like, it's so funny how like the art or the creativity or anything, that's the stuff that I find, you know, is the simple stuff, but the stuff that is like the constant, especially you know, I empathize with you and she said and being in New York, you know, that must have been so hard. I mean, I'm in I'm in London now, which is probably an easier city, but it's a location movie. So it's a new place every day and it's new challenges and working quickly. And, um, you know, I sort of I'm missing being out in Africa and these huge big experiences. <laughs> Yes, with just loads of space and loads of space it's to life. Space. <laughs> like, oh my God, this is so much harder. Yeah, you know, each movie is it. That's why it's exciting, isn't it? It's like yeah. so different, all the different challenges, I guess, that each film I think, provides. I think every, I'm sure you guys do this. Every time I read a script and when you start, I mean, when you're going past talking about the the journey of the characters and everything there's always something in this script that you go oh my god how am I going to do that like every script and, the, and that, that like you're saying that's an exciting part of our job is is how you work that out like Natasha you're working in a place with white walls how do you do that you know and you you end up working out like you did you worked out a, a way of doing it um but I find that on every film there's something that you go oh that wow how am I going to do that but I love that part of it. like for me for me on Elvis the biggest challenge was I'd never done a musical before and um we had to we built everything like there was no theatres we went to there was no stages so that showroom at the International Hotel gigantic lighting setup huge we had like all the backstage all the audience all the dressing rooms and everything is one set and that was the thing in my mind. I was going, wow. And I remember the, um, my gaffer, who's a guy I've worked with for a really long time, Sean Conway, who's fantastic. We, he and I were going, well, maybe we need to get like theatrical lighting people in to set it up and build it, build the, the rig and everything that was going to be lighting the stage. And then the next day I, I was awake all night and I thought, no, I can do this. Why can't I do it? I I can do it. It's lighting. I can I can do this, and I can work it out. And he and when I we came back in the morning and I said I've decided we're going to do it. And he said yes. I'm so glad you said that. We can let, let's do it. And um and I'm really glad I did because it was I was always riding this line of um this fine line in this movie of replicating the exact lighting of the period. And what would be there, but also to make it more cinematic for, you know, lack of a better word. But so like when we're shooting in the TV studio in the 68 special, that lighting is horrible and it's all top hard light. And I wanted to make him look better than that and to be able to see his eyes. So I bought LED lights in and added them um, off screen and stuff like that. So I was trying to keep it to its period correctness, but also make it a bit more beautiful and um yeah so that was my challenge on this movie and, and I loved it and I think um 
I just want to say one other thing about politics because that is something that you do realise when you start shooting that you have to be a general and run a set. You have to be communicative. You have to be collaborative. And then you have to deal with things when things go wrong in your department, how you deal with that and when there's conflict between people and you know so it's 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 a big job it's not just shooting making pretty pictures isn't it it's like uh, and and when the film's going over or something's going wrong it's you and the first AD and the director that get called to the office with the executive producers so you have a lot of responsibility of running the set as well yeah that was a long-winded addition to what you said no, no, I mean, all those things you said I'm going through right now on my movie, it's like, you know, we don't have enough time, the schedule is too tight, we're going over, there's conflict and drama and like, you know, it's just a different thing every day that you're trying to like navigate through in the best way that you can, you know, and like do the best job and like just keep pushing everybody as best you can yeah. to like make the movie the best it can be, you know, but it's... um it is it's like that's that thing isn't it when you're like for all the people that are like trying to do this job is is it is that sort of realization when you get to do it that the stuff that you learn at film school about lighting or camera or all the people that you look at for references and framing and all the amazing work that's out there it's all the stuff that happens behind the scenes that is really challenging and you know yeah that's a real test like the yeah. girls your movie probably when they have to go through the <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it is and I find it a lot more challenging actually um the politics uh from us up to or around than the the the, the kind of part of being a general and managing my team I, f I feel like it's the most challenging thing is the casting, especially when you're shooting outside and you don't have like your family crew and you have to like find the people and have this psychological scanner really quickly. Yeah. Where yeah. you're going to cast the right, the right people. Um, um, but I think if you manage to do that, it's, I find that that part of like the, the being the general and the teamwork with my team much more rewarding than challenging and I love to include them also a lot like what Mandy was saying before you know and like how am I going to do this or I have this idea but you know the director is pushing me which is great to make it better and I love to make my crew part of those challenges as well and part of the creative process and share with them my doubts my insecurities or my like this is my idea isn't it great like but what's the best way to achieve it and stuff but what I find most challenging is the the politics, uh, you know, with at, at the producing level or, or other departments when you have all these conflicts that there's, you know, you're saying that you need something but there's no there's no money but it's still in the script they still are expecting you to deliver a result but they're not giving you like the tools to to deliver these results and and I think as women it's a lot more delicate to have those conversations. Um, than you know if we're talking about you know female dps here uh, um i i think uh like what i used to do a lot and it's funny like i did it uh, a lot um mostly at the beginning of my career i remember doing it in in the rover where mandy was really helping me we didn't know each other but i got her email and she was helping me to crew up and trying to find the the right people and I found some amazing amazing crew in Australia but I remember like uh you know that was one of my first bigger movies you know coming to America and stuff and I remember like going to the meetings where I was gonna say I need a process trailer I need a crane you know I, I need this specific stuff to achieve this specific storyboard that we have here um with my grip and my gaffer behind me because I could feel like the weight of the male word or the also the word of that guys that had white hair and I was 30 uh was gonna have more weight and it, that it it was a great support um but it, that I think this is a really interesting topic and maybe it's not the whole topic of this thing but um it's interesting to talk about when we talk about politics you know how um how as a woman you 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 can be strong enough 
to be respected and, and you know, fight for what you need to fight for the movie um, without crossing a line where because you're a woman and not a guy, you might be perceived as, as being too tough or I, I don't have the vocabulary, but I guess you know what I mean. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. And it's true <laughs> because, um, and the other thing I say to, you know, women that are, working with me and coming up in the department is about being confident because you do I think that you know I spent time being the only woman in the camera department which I'm sure you you both have been in that situation too for a really long time like when I very first started shooting um there was only me and I just had to get all the guys on my side and um you need to be like not too humble about asking for things and I think as women we tend to do that a little bit we don't want to appear to be aggressive mm -hmm. so there's a way of negotiating that I've learned over all these years and about getting those guys that are very strong alpha males on my side without being too kind of um what's the word I, I know exactly what you mean Natasha and and, and I'm sure Polly you come across the same thing is that there's a, a sort of a um a place where you have to have authority and you have to have respect and you've got to find that place um because there was a lot of when I first started there was a lot of guys that just stand around like this and when I was asking them to do stuff and just look at me like and waiting for me to fail or being you know and I had to ignore it and 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 that that's what I say to women now is be confident in your decision. If you make a decision, follow it through and and be able to um, not doubt yourself and don't feel that pressure that people are judging you. And and I feel like it's getting better and better. But that's something I had to learn. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think you know, like now, of course, Natasha, you know, your body of work and and Mandy, like. I mean, it's so expansive and it's so varied and it's so beautiful. And like you can prove to these people that you know what you're talking about and you can do your job. Um, and, you know, recently on this movie, I've had like different people come and shadow me and all the sort of things that they say that they come up against, which is, or even in America too, where people say, oh, I have, to, I feel like I have to go to AFI because if I don't go to AFI, people aren't going to respect me because you can only go to AFI and be respected when you leave and, and, you know, I think it's that thing exactly right is just it is about being confident. Um, and also, I think, like you said to Natasha is, is about being confident, but also about not being um, scared about being vulnerable in that way. Because, you know, I've definitely like read stuff on scripts, especially like on this TV show Legion I did, which was so like out there and crazy. And I was like, it was the first union TV show I did in America. and um, I didn't, I had, all, I had the ideas, you know, I had the vision, I, like I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to achieve it. And I think it is that balance for me about being confident and assured and being like, this is what I want, but I don't know how to do it. So how can you help me achieve what I see, you know? So it's like, you know, for everybody who's coming out, it's like, you don't need to know about all the different remote heads and that one is nodal and one isn't, or one can do this or do that or the cranes or whatever, because you have your team there, which, you know, Tasha says is like, you work together to, you know, execute the vision, but it's also about, you know, being confident and not backing down on, you know, it's a very delicate thing because we all know what we're sort of talking about is the historical thing about if you're a strong woman that people will, you know, call you a bitch you know, or whatever. I mean, I feel like maybe I'm lucky that I haven't necessarily had that term, but I think lots of young women coming up, you know, it's definitely something they're worried about, about how they can lead a group of men or now lead a group of men and women, you know, and now there's more balance on set. Um, but it's, it's, it's a tricky road to go down and to, you know, be that balance of confident yet open and vulnerable and just to work, you know, as a group, as, as, you know, to collaborate and, um, yeah, it's like something that we all just get better at and just go through, yeah. but, um, yeah. I imagine it might be easier for women coming up now though, than for us, because I think for us, or at least my experience, I'm not going to generalize, but like there was a 
there was something, you know, 20 something years ago, um, there was an aspect of defense in the way that I had to create my shield or whatever, you know, because it was attack all the time, because people would just look at you and say, you can't be a DP, you're handicapped because you're a woman. How can you get the handheld? How can you do this? So you had to prove a lot and you you were kind of prepared, <laughs> braced for impact. So there was already like, like a little bit of a defensive um having to prove I'm I'm almost like the better man, right? Like because you had mm. to be man. And mm. I think that 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 was really fucked up uh for a lot of other like, thing because you it, 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 it could be misleading in, into like getting the strength from a different energy, which is more male. And 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 I think that the cool thing now with everything changing is that um there's no need to to do you know to go through that first step to then learn what you know we all learn after a few years no I have to be myself I don't I, I don't have to be in competition with anyone and you know I have to it's okay to create from from who I am but um I think this is very interesting for this moment now and then the women that are starting now you know that there's a, a little bit more freedom in that way and I think when you can be in your true energy and not really like trying to prove that you're something that you're not or, or, or competing or showing a strength that is not the real strength that you have as a woman, which is different and maybe stronger. Um, I think that the, the, the less confusing that's on an energetic level there and the working space, then also the, the more clear is in, on your creative space because you don't have this conflict, you know? Yeah, it's and, um, absolutely right. It, it's funny when I got to Australia and um, people was talking about Mandy Walker, they, the crew, you know, I was interviewing all this crew and, and everyone was talking about Mandy having in the dolly a specific thing for the lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> like not for your, not for your coffee. Just for the- <laughs> That's right. Really, I did. They I made was- me- I was like, I really want to meet this woman. She's my hero. That's that said everything. Of course, you know, that's like do it with a lipstick, you know. <laughs> it's true. They built me like this little container for my lipstick when I was operating on the dolly. I know it's very cute. But it's because they were used to me. Like you were saying, it's taken, I think it's taken a long time for us to be in that position. And it's so weird because. I get asked all the time, as I'm sure you do, is why there, you know, there was not women cinematographers 30 years ago, and why was why is cinematography still only six percent of us are women, and or or there isn't more diversity in terms of color, people of color, and um, that I don't know, and I don't know why it's been such a kind of battle to get us in there I I really don't know it's very strange because in other industries you know um women are are sort of were were getting there was parody like years and years ago I I don't I just don't know I don't know if you guys know but I don't have an answer it's tough for me as a man I feel so guilty hearing hearing a lot of what you guys are talking about it's uh I mean I'm, I'm glad I'm glad things are changing it's a, that's a difficult it's question. Slow, to though. Ask. It's definitely getting better. It's like there, there, there's more um, opportunities for women. People are aware of it. Like whenever I start a movie now, I, I, you know, even production will be aware of it. Of saying, look, we've got to find some more women in the camera department, or we've got to give opportunities to more diverse crew. Um, and it's a, it is talked about, and it never used to be talked about. Um, but it's definitely changing, but it's slow. Yes, it is slow. slow. I mean, there there is balance. There's definitely more balance. Like I have women in the electric department here. Uh, There's always women in the camera department. There's people of color. Um, But I think it's definitely something that now you're right. Like we're all consciously aware of and we're doing it and it will take time. And sometimes I think it's better. And then I, you know, hear stories or whatever. And I realize we still have so far to go, but I think, you know, it's great that it's, we're addressing it. And I think like Natasha, you know, the story that you told has so much to do with that, you know, and, um, you know, gosh, it's 
it's so tragic what happened to all those women and I'm just I'm happy that you know they were so strong and you know were able to come out and stand together and tell their story because it's really just made you know balance in this industry you know and equality and all the rest of it's just come so far because of it yeah it's still gonna take time because I think you you, you know you can't just suddenly have 20 female DPs like it takes uh, you know a decade to be able to to be shooting uh you know a, a movie and knowing what what you're doing or well, maybe not a decade but it takes time it takes you know time to become a good first I see it gets time to become a, a so you know, we can only start with planting seeds and getting these people the opportunity to get trained, to be trainees, and then to go up the ladder like everyone else. It's not about promoting somebody that is not qualified uh, to do a job, which is happening a lot here. Uh, mm. Because that would also backfire. Because yes. then, then this person is not really up to the task and it's a failure. And then it's like, okay, we're not doing this again because we lost whatever. So... Mm. I think it's also finding the balance of understanding that it's a process and we just have to go step by step and we'll see results in a few years. We'll see more results than what we're seeing now. What advice would you guys give to aspiring female cinematographers who are just starting out in what is still a male dominated industry? I only know my own story really to be able to give advice is that if you feel passionate about it to just keep pursuing it and knowing that there's going to be a few hurdles and it's a hard job it's not an easy job and you have to be prepared to <clears throat> work really hard um I'm going to say that quote that Russell Boyd told me that I did mention in my Panavision interview and I, I, that he's, I said to him when I was first starting out you know what's your advice and I got advice from John Seal. They were both there. I was doing a masterclass with John Seal and Russell Boyd in Australia. And um, I said, um, what, what's your advice? And John Seal said, just remember this one thing. Day exteriors are the hardest lighting situation you'll ever have. And I thought, oh, that's kind of weird. And then I worked out, yes, he's right. Nice. Um, and then Russell Boyd said, work really hard and don't be a dick. And I went, <laughs> Okay, and I remember those two things, and it's true. Be respectful of other people, be um, uh, helpful, and to and 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 like I'm sure all of us, you know, are very aware that women coming into our department are going to feel like we first started, and you have to encourage them, and you have to give them confidence, and but you do have to have a passion about it, I think, and if you don't, then you know, you won't succeed and you've got to juggle family and children and partners and, you know, all that stuff's not easy. Um, so you just have to be prepared for the, the um, you know, the, the hard work. Yeah, I mean, I would just second everything that Mandy just said. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I remember once having a camera trainee that we were still shooting on film and uh, he was, saying, you know, he was like loading the truck and he's like, He's like, oh, I shouldn't be loading the truck. I should be loading the film. And I was like, no, like you got to get really good at loading that truck before you get anywhere near that tent, you know, that bag. Like you, you, this is where it all begins. Like you can't jump the steps or whatever. But I just think, you know, it is, it's like a carousel. It's like the the life of a, dinner, a cinematographer is like ups and downs. And um, especially when you're starting out, it's like just riding you know being able to be like okay I really want to do this I'm so passionate about it that you know the good times are really good and then I don't have any work and I don't know what I'm going to do but I'm broke but I'm going to just try and hold out until I get my next job and just just you know just to keep that sense of self-belief and confidence that you can do it and you will do it because it's really hard you know it is it's it's a really hard career and it's like it's a fight to get the good scripts. And even now I'm sure all of us here are still fighting to get the good scripts, you know, and it's like to just really want the good material and to work with the good directors and all the rest of it and not just work. Um, and, you know, I feel very blessed that I can work and make a living and support my family, but also I don't want to just work. I want to work on the really good stuff. And so that's still a challenge um, to fight to get that. So I think it's like that, 
you know, it's not just an easy choice, you know, so you do have to really be passionate and just love it so much. Yeah. Great. Natasha? Yeah, I think it's the closest decision of joining a circus, you know, you, you have to be from that kind of tribe, you know, if you want a normal life and be back home at a certain time and all, all of that. All of those things that's not going to happen with this job so it's it's a life decision it's not just a job decision and and it's a commitment for sure um and then i would just add uh, the only thing that i can add because you guys said everything um in terms of what polly was saying and you know trying to get the good scripts and stuff for for the people that are starting um it it can be very challenging because one piece of advice that a lot of people would give is like just shoot as much as you can so that you learn you, you gain experience on everything you know and everything is experience which I think it's a valid thing but uh, in, in my personal experience I since the beginning since film school and doing my first exercises and shorts I could never do that I always had to find there was some kind of meaning in what I was doing even if it was like a test for like you know first time I do like a process trailer or whatever as an exercise um, I always had to fall in love with what I was telling if it was a mini story or like what the shot was it couldn't be just like a, oh, I'm, it's not great but it's just an exercise so that I'm learning about this other thing and I, I, I came to understand it much later as this analogy that we are an instrument and that when we're starting especially we're tuning our instrument and you have to be very careful not to go out of tune because then it's hard to find the, you know, it's already, if you're concentrated on tuning, it's, it's hard to find the tune and find, you know, and who you are as an artist and how do you say things. But if on top of that, you're like doing other things that are the tuning you, it's a lot harder. And, and I think that's important at the beginning, at least for me, that were, those were my choices. And I think sometimes it meant shooting less stuff and going forward a bit slower but every decision I took, I, I would own it and I would be 100% passionate about what I was doing, which allowed me to give 300% um, and, and, and allowed me to find my voice in a way and, and, and not get confused and, 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 and build a body of work that, that people would recognize and they would say, that's this person, that's this voice as an artist. And, and, I, and I think that's that's a challenge when you're starting because you you sometimes need to get jobs to pay your rent. Um, but it's also something I believe to be very aware of to keep your, your path. Well, great, really insightful and bits of advice from all three of you. I've got a whole list Got a whole list but of then advice. we all do commercials and, and things that we <laughs> don't necessarily love so much to survive. I'm not I'm not sell, selling myself as a purist. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, commercials can be fun as well. I'm talking from someone who primarily does commercials. But um, yes, for sure, there is a lot of soul, soul selling when you're doing commercials as opposed to the creative art that you get from yeah no but movies. i love commercials for example because like when 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 i was a kid like i didn't know what commercials was i didn't know that it was the same filmmakers that do both and when i learned i was like i will never do that but when i learned properly about it and i started doing them i realized that the commercials were out actually my gateway to freedom in terms of which movies I choose. And I think most of us, uh, you know, are, are doing that. So you juggle. So when you do a commercial yet, yeah, your soul is not probably there. I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes it's great products with great directors, but you know, specifically like that's when you're at the gym, when you're practicing your craft, when you're building your crew and, and all that stuff, it's separate. But when you're on a film, it's like you're putting your soul there. So I, I personally find it a very good, balance you know what I, I i don't have to negotiate my artistic choices um because i i have the commercial support in that that side of economics do you have i'm like i said before i have a whole list of questions i wanted to ask all of you but i'm conscious of your time polly and the kids want something you were saying before natasha about the life choice what we do in this industry especially as cinematographers i i feel like our jobs probably are one of the hardest jobs on set because you're never sitting around there are lots of other departments are sitting around in between takes 
I feel like we're never, we never stop for a second from morning to night. And I'm sure many people are working from morning to night, but not in the same way as everyone's dependent on what we do. Because if we don't do our job properly, we're gonna screw it up for everyone else. So there, that does affect our life and our life choices. And Polly, you've got your kids waiting for you to put, put them to sleep. I do, but I also don't wanna stop the conversation. So I, you know, I can just like nip off and I can leave you guys to keep talking. But um, yeah, I mean, it is that thing is, um, you know, you never stop thinking about it. Like you never stop thinking like Natasha, you were saying like you make that choice on set. And then like, I come home and I'm like, I'm sitting there at the end of the night. I'm like, did I make the right choice? So I was like, oh yeah, no, I, I made it. So it was the right choice. But then you have to think about the next day and, you know, you've got to like, you know, I'm always sort of, I'm consciously there, you know, it's like, that's why making a movie is, you know, you have to make the right choice of what movie you do, because it's, you do dedicate so much of your life and soul for that period of your life. It's like a real investment. Um, and then if you have a family, whatever, it's their investment as well. So it's, it's, um, it's definitely a big decision and why commercials, like you're saying, are so fantastic. Um, but I am going to go and leave you to continue this only because I've not put my kids to sleep for a long time and I have tonight. So I'm going to go read them a story. I have to go too, actually. Sorry. No, no, it's actually, I, it's all of us because uh, my kids are waking up right now. So I, to, <laughs> okay. I, I have to get breakfast ready and get them ready for school. It's a perfect time to wrap it up. Is there, is there any parting, parting message any of you want to share with each other or before we go? No, it's I like just. Monday. What did you say? It's luck to Monday. Oh, like, thank you. I'm so yes. like, I'm excited and crossing fingers. Thank you. Yeah, fingers, yes. toes crossed, everything. Yes. I also just want to say this I love catching up with Polly and Natasha and you, Matt. It's just, this was a really good, um, a good experience having, having this yeah. chat. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it was a yeah. pleasure. Yeah. We're really yeah. lucky to, to be able to take this time to talk with people like ourselves and cinematographers and we don't always get the chance to no, sit down and discuss these things with each other yeah but mandy good luck being the first woman yes. in history to hopefully on, win asc thank you oh, an Oscar. we're all there for you we're all we there are. for you we are so there. yeah you should have won that you should have you should have won the bafta i was i was very i was when i was there i was like <laughs> it's gonna be mandy it's gonna be mandy not, not to take anything away <laughs> I just want to say that Mandy should have won so many times before for also so many other movies. So, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And Mandy looks so gorgeous. Oh my God. Like, wow. Alex, was that Alexander McQueen? I mean, yeah. And, and I'm wearing Alexander McQueen for the Oscars too. Oh, wow. I know. Wow. That's so exciting. So exciting. What a great note to finish on. Well, we'll all be rooting Thank for you. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us and we really hope you enjoyed today's film roundtable. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more great content.